Our next speaker is Elizabeth Avatcher. Liz currently lives in Lynn with her supporting and loving family. She is, she is a shy, observant, deep thinker who loves nature and solitude. Liz loves to write poetry and enjoys sharing it with others. She is intuitively spiritual and shares her greatest desire with what the great Muhammad Gandhi embodied and shared, which is peace in the world that no one will suffer and all would have all that they need. She is a certified hospice worker and after having been a committed <coughs> volunteer at a hospice agency. Liz often expresses her own how very important it is to sit and spend whatever, whatever amount of time with her hospice patients that she can. She recently completed the hospice training in Massachusetts and is looking forward to volunteering again. Liz has participated in ANAMI trainings, a wellness action recovery trainings, and is planning to become a, a certified specialist. So if we can welcome her to uh, speak today. Brush you off as though you're less than a whole person, 
And in some cases, the other person looks at you like you might have a catching disease. That's, that's been just a horrible experience. But I have a lot of depression. I have a lot of sadness. Anyway, um, with my life and mental health, all I can say is it's caused me to cry more alone and care more about others because I have empathy and I don't want others to suffer the way I have. Everyone I've met in the DMH office in Lynn cares, and it's true. Many times when I walk in the office and they know behind their reception desk and I'm there, they'll say, do you need me Kleenex for this? The folks behind from my tears. Um, the folks behind the receptionist here always greet me with politeness. In addition to my relationship with Gina, another meaningful connection DMH helped me make is with Salem Connections Clubhouse. I went there for over a year and went to the spring. I have some really meaningful bracelets on my arm to kind of help give me some support. And one of them is uh, different angels that one of the members at the clubhouse had made. That's pretty special to me. Uh, I went there for over a year and planned to return this spring. I felt welcome there from the first time you and I went there. The members were always gentle and compassionate. The staff always kind and respectful. I always felt they listened and encouraged us to share in the groups. There were several groups I enjoyed, the poetry group and the writing groups being my favorite. When I'm around people from DMH, the clubhouse, or the office in Lynn and in this room with thousands of people, and for somebody that is a loner, it's pretty amazing that <laughs> I can be doing this. <laughs> Um, when I'm around people from DMH, the clubhouse, the office, and Lynn, I always feel safe to be myself, and that is very important to me. I have a very hard time being around people unless I can relate to them and them to me. I was bullied as a child, and I left a lot of weariness of people in my heart. Plus, I was a family member. Um, anyway, lastly, most importantly, and truly with all of my heart because you guys saved my life. I'm thankful. I'm thankful to, to DMH for helping me stand on my two feet again. About six months ago, Gina helped me move into my own apartment. For the first time in many years, I feel hopeful. I was almost homeless, and with the help of DMH, I'm in a very safe, peaceful, quiet, comfortable place. No eggshells, no mind games by anyone, but jumping through hoops. The write up on that blur that says that I live with my family and you know I live alone. DMH made that possible. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what to thank. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> she just said, I know. <laughs> uh, I am literally able to breathe again. That's very true, and she knows that. I was always afraid of being alone. I have major abandonment issues, but I don't feel alone. I know I have Gina and DMH helping me. I know life changes. I know I have changed. I know healing is an everyday task. For some of us, it's a lot more effort than others. But I have hope, which I never had before. When I was little, I obsessively worried and when I wasn't worrying I was worrying about how much I worried and with, with the help of my therapist and the help of Gina and Jerry I am working on changing the worrying to hoping. Um, life is for learning and I've learned a lot. I'm a caring person and I look forward to becoming a care specialist one day to give back, to help another. I think that's the most beautiful thing a person can do, to help someone in need and not turn their back on that person. Somebody that has mental health challenges, emotional, and, and with their thoughts, and we, we need somebody to care, to just be gentle. I survived the darkest days of my life, and while I have a ways to go, I'm on my way. In closing, I'd like to wish you all peace. If there is one word that describes the healing for me, it would be peace. Peace of mind. May it be with all of us. And I'd like to share a couple of my poems. Um, this is called The Lesson of Peace. I, while I did write this, I, I fight with this all the time. I probably wrote this to try to help myself. Lesson of Peace. Do not cry, do not weep. Release the experience. The lesson is yours to keep. 
Loss is an opportunity, not a lack of love's unity. No need to put decisions under a microscope or live a life without hope. Life is not a choice of which way to travel. Your mind and heart are not in battle. A path is more than a left or right. There is nothing to hold on to with all of your mind. Observe nature, learn how it expresses life. It does not question or again fight against destiny. It does not look back to how it used to be. But wait for tomorrow to express gratitude. Trusting is its consistent attitude. Each road will lead us into opportunity to heal and release. Allow loss to teach its lesson of peace. May the sight and sounds of nature bring calm and peace to you. And then my last poem that I'd like to share is it's called The Altar of the Heart. And Darkness is a tunnel the mind must walk through to discover universal forgiveness. And to have all of you will have I have to have the humane help of me walk through this tunnel. I, I, I thank you. I thank you. Fear is a bridge the thought must cross to discover unconditional love. Separation is a mask the eyes must remove to discover the truth of oneness. My dear brothers and sisters, allow the gifts of peace to sit gently like a butterfly in the palm of your hands at the altar of your heart, where all begins and ends and begins again. Thank you.